Are you ready for the Word of God today? I have something that I'd like to share with you God has placed on my heart. It came out of a recently concluded two series, that, well, we did more than two, the series of studies that we were doing. So today is in between, put it that way. So today I got, well, we, you know, it's a free, I, no, I just want, let me see how best I can say it, is that share the Word of God what you feel God is saying to you today. Come on, somebody. Amen. So that's what I'm going to do this morning. So if you have your Bibles, would you please stand with me if you can. If you can't stand, it's okay. I do get it. You can sit, get whatever Bible you have or, or your iPhone or however you're reading today. And let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 25. Exodus 25. And I'm going to read a section of the scripture here so that I can kind of do what I've said to you guys many times before, read a little before, read a little after. When you're there, just give me an amen. I know it's going to come up behind me as well. I'm reading from the NIV, and the Bible says here in, in verse 16, did I say 16 to 32? I did say that, right? 16 to 30, okay. Then put in the ark the testimony which I will give you. Make atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide. Then make two cherubims, one of hammered gold, at the end of the cover. Make one cherub on one end and a cherub on the other side. Make the cherub of one piece with the cover. I'm going to show you a picture later on so you can get an idea of um, what I'm saying here today. Make the cherubim of one piece with the cover of two ends. And the cherub, they're to have their wings spread towards each other, overshadowing the covering cover of them. The cherubims are to face each other, looking towards the cover. And verse 21 says, place the cover on top of the ark and put in the ark the testimonies which I will give you. And verse 22 says, there above the cover between the two cherubim, that are over the ark of the testimony, I will meet you, in the, meet you in all my commands of the Israelites. Father, this morning we're grateful for your word today. I pray, God, as I share your word with your people today, that hearts will be changed, Father. Lives will be transformed. We thank you for your touch today. And the church say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I read a little bit of <clears throat> from the book of Exodus today. And some of you may say, well, I'm not sure what I just read. Is that, just give me an amen, though, just be honest. Not sure. Because this is not a portion of scripture that I would normally go and read about. So, well, then, it's good that I'm reading it to you now so that we can talk about it. The Bible tells us in the description that we just read about the Ark of the Covenant. And you may say, well, what is the Ark of the Covenant? Well, let's go ahead and talk for a moment. The Ark of the Covenant represents God's presence. Are you in the house? The Ark of the Covenant is telling the children of Israel that God is in the midst of them. I'm going to put up today the tabernacle so that you can get an understanding of what God did in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, when the children of Israel, as you remember, God freed them from slavery in Egypt. You remember that, don't you? Come on, talk to me. Amen. Amen. God took them out of Egypt, and he was now taking them to the promised land. But there they are now, traveling, moving from one place to the next. God told Moses, I want to dwell among you. 
God was leading them, if you know the word or if you're familiar with the scripture, he was leading them by the pillar of cloud by day and the fire by what? By night. But then they didn't know, oh yeah, there God's leading us. But God wanted them to know that I am in your midst. So what God did, he told Moses, he said, Moses, let's build a tabernacle. And I have a, a little image here of the tabernacle. Just back up one minute. The tabernacle, as you see here, is the big the tabernacle here. The children of Israel pitched their tents around the tabernacle here. There were tribes on this side, tribes on this side, tribes on this side, tribes on this side. What God was teaching them, that I am in your presence, right in the middle of where you dwell. Are you in the house? Let's look a little closer. The children of Israel, the tabernacle is divided into three parts. The outer court, the inner court, which is about here, and then you can't see it. The back end is called the most holiest of holies. God designed it that way, meaning just like you are, body, soul, and spirit, God designed this tabernacle the same way, the outer court, the inner court, and the most holiest of holies. What God was telling them, that's a picture of who we are. How many of you know in the New Testament, we don't set up tabernacles like this today. Come on, somebody. But what we do, the Bible says, our bodies are a what? A living sacrifice. My body is a tabernacle. Tabernacle, not literally, but spiritually, so that the presence of God can do what? Talk to me now. Dwell on the inside of me. Are you in the house? Now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I, te I preached a long time ago, it's way back, on a series of study on the tabernacle. I'm not going to do that this morning. I'm going to do a quick flyover. Is that okay? When you come in this tabernacle, there are multiple pieces of furniture when you get in the tabernacle. The first one you'll meet is what we call the altar of in, bur the burnt offering, and where the priest will come in, they'll burn the offering. And then here's a laver where a little, almost like a bird feeder, or wash, not a feeder, a bird wash, where the, t he, the priest will come in and he would then wash before he goes in because he can't go in unclean. He, will, he can come in this tabernacle here, this portion of our the outer court, inner court. Inside of that, you had the golden lampstand, you had the table of shoe bread, the altar of incense. On the, in the most holiest of holies now, there's one piece of furniture, which is this one here, the Ark of the Covenant, what we read today. Now, man, if you want mine, put it, okay. This now, what you're seeing here, is the Ark of the Covenant. This will make some sense to you about what we just read. The Bible talked about it. Here, is, this is the, whole, the Ark of itself, Ark of the Covenant. We read about the two cherubims, remember we said that. And they were leaning over, we read it, God give this picture to Moses so that Moses can prepare this here. And this here represents the very presence of God dwelling in the most holiest of holies. Now, here's what I will say to you. When you think of your life, my life, it's almost in a sense a replica of what we're looking at. In which God's presence is dwelling where? On the inside of us. Aren't you glad you don't have to go build a tabernacle anywhere place? Hello? Because this body is a tabernacle where God can what? Can dwell. And I'm so glad today for what God has done. All right. Today I want to share th about a few other things and that's, you may say, well, how, and I'm going to let you see how this is applicable to us today. Inside of this, you may say, okay, what's that, that little piece of thing I'm talking about? Now, this whole thing is what we call the Ark of the Covenant. How many of you remember when David, when this Ark was stolen by the Philistines, and David wanted to go back and get this whole, this Ark? 
How many of you remember the story? Now role play with me now. Remember when David was bringing the ark back? He first of all didn't, I guess maybe he didn't read the word, and he put it on a donkey cart. Remember that? How many of you don't remember that? Okay, if you don't, I'm telling you. He did that, and what happened? The cart at one time was shaking on the donkey's cart. Remember that? And somebody, Uzzah, stretched out to stabilize it because it was going to what? To fall. And what happened to him? He died because the Bible said you can't touch that thing. Now, what was the instruction God gave to, to carry this thing? You see this? And this? It was to be carried how? On the shoulders of the? Shout me down. Of the priest, it should be, that's how it should, when David now realized, okay, let's leave this Ark of the Covenant in the home of a guy, and he left it there in Obed-Edom's home. The Bible tells us it stayed how many, how long? Three months in Obed-Edom's home. I'm giving you some information here. Guess what happened while the presence of God was in Obedidam's house? You shout me down. Help shout me down. The Bible says that his home got blessed. Why? Because the presence of God was in his home. Are you in the house? The Bible tells us if I was to let my imagination run, his wife got blessed. His son got blessed. Even the pets got blessed. <laughs> Everything in Obedidam's home, God bless. Why? Because of the very presence of God. What am I saying, church? You see, when you and I invite the presence of God in our life, in our home, guess what we're doing? We're setting ourselves up for what? The blessings of God. Because God's presence will bring His what? His blessings. So church, listen to me very carefully. I don't think God just did this just because. He did it because he wanted to teach the children of Israel. You see, when I am in your presence, and we sang a beautiful song earlier, when we're in God's presence, just one touch, just one look, and God can bring change in our lives. Somebody ought to give Jesus praise today. Listen to me, church. When you and I today ask God to come into our life, come into our home, and bless her, God's presence will bring blessings in our home. And I want the presence of God in my home. I don't know about you. Come on, somebody. All righty. I'm going to share quickly a few more things with you so that you can follow. You may say, well, how is this applying to me? It is relevant to us. Are you in the house? Within, this cover can come off. They can, the priest can lift this off. God told them to do a few, there are three things that's inside of this tap, this Ark of the Covenant. And I want to share that with you this morning. Amanda, there you go. You shout me down if you recognize it. The three things that were inside of that Ark of the Covenant, what is that? The manna, God told it. Remember, we preached that, as I said. This message kind of came out of what we were preaching recently. Remember, we talk about what God did to the children of Israel? He did what? He rained down manna from on high. We're going to talk about that. What is this? Shout me down. All righty. I'm going to get... I got a rough crowd here today. Aaron's rod that's budded. This is Aaron's rod that's budded. We're going to talk about that. And then this is the Ten Commandments. All right. I have three things I want to share on these three here. So let's talk about the pot of manna here. In Exodus 16, you can turn back to Exodus 16. I'll let you do that for homework. I want to talk to you a little bit about God's love and His provision for us. When you think about what God did... For the children of Israel, that's why God said to them, take that and keep a portion. And God told Moses, put it in the Ark of the Covenant as a reminder to the children of Israel that whenever they see the Ark of the Covenant and they know what's in there, they'll remember God's provision for them. Are you in the house? You see, you remember what God did when they came out of Egypt. 
God, let's back up a second. When they came out of Egypt, they were depending on, on Egypt for their provision, put it that way. It was all provided in Egypt for them. When they came out of Egypt and marching through the desert, there was no provision in the sense. And when they cried out to God, what did God do? He poured out when they were hungry. He poured out manna upon them. And they picked up the manna on a daily basis. I said, when you think about the manna, it's our daily dependence on our Lord Jesus Christ. When you see God's manna, when they see it, they'll remember that there's a God who's providing for them. Are you in the house today? Listen to me carefully now. When you and I, okay, you, we think of, of the manna, I want you to think of, we don't, of course, there's no manna today, but here's what I have. I have total dependence, or God is saying, I want you to have total dependence upon me. Are you in the house? You see, too many times we depend on so many things in our life to sustain us. We depend, hello, let me, maybe tread the water lightly here. Many times we depend on the government. Hello. We depend on a big brother. We, a, there's always a big brother or a big sister somewhere. Instead of doing what? Depending on who? Our great provider. You see, God, you see, when you, let me back this up. The economy can be tough. How many more do you want to say amen to that? Life can be tough, but here's what I can tell you. There's one person that you and I can depend on who will never fail us. The government can fail us. Economy can fail. Even our bank accounts can do what? Our 401 can do what? Because it's here today and could be gone tomorrow. But here's something, church. When I put my confidence in the Lord God Almighty, come on somebody, I know that I can depend on Him because He is not functioning. Oh, somebody help me today. He's not governed by what's going on. The market can crash there can be lots of problems, but church, listen to me. We have a God who is El Shaddai. He is a God. Oh, somebody shout today. See, you and I can be living in some tough times. Can be all around us. But I'm glad that I can lift my eyes to the hill because my help is coming from the Lord God Almighty. Do I have some witnesses in the house today? Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. If I had a chance today to ask folks in this congregation, I'm sure I'll get a few people stand, more than a few, who will stand up and say, things were rough. But guess what? I didn't put my confidence in the things around me. I put my confidence in God, and God opened the door. He made a, he's a way maker, miracle worker, promise. Oh, somebody help me today. He will make a way where there seemed to be no way. Amen. See, when we think of the manna to the children of Israel, they remember God's provision. And church, today, we, we, we don't have to think about the manna per se, but what we can think of, what God was teaching them, that he is a God that will provide. They had a need, and God did what? Provide. Here's something the, God, the Word of God says. The Bible tells us, my God shall what? Talk back to me. Shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Church, we, it doesn't matter who you are. If we have a need, I can, tell, I can tell you, church, we can take that need to God. No, I didn't say a want. Someone, some, somebody, shout me down. I didn't say a want, did he? He said a need because we all want a lot of things. And God didn't say, I'll supply your wants. He said, I'll supply your need. So if you have a need today, church, let's look at the God who can provide for us. Just like he did to the children of Israel, God can do the same for us, what? Amen. Today. Uh, I gotta hurry along real quickly before my time gets away. So number one, God's provision for them through the manner. 
Let's look at number two real quickly. We want to talk about Aaron's rod that budded. I have to paint the picture to you about Aaron's rod. When we look at Aaron's rod, I want you... I, I got those feet. Matter of fact, since me, me and my wife, Emma, we were sitting down when I was getting... Trying to... Well, not even trying. I was just sitting down in a conversation. We were looking at something. Oh, a broadcast. And right there and then, we, we start, she started to help me to construct the message. I said, I feel like preaching on this one here today. Well, it was a couple of weeks ago when I, when I said that to her. So we talk about God's provision. P, God's what? So I put the P's together. And now I want to talk about God's power and God's leading here. Let me just paint the picture for you or give you a background to the story. There were a couple of guys who rebelled against Moses. They felt, well, Moses, why are you, who, cho who chose you to begin with? The three guys, Korah, Datham, and Abiram, these three guys. So they got together and they started to, to instigate some trouble. They got 250 people along with them. Now, I can deviate here for a second, and Pastor Allen could probably help me out here. Oh, I know some church folks like that. Thank God, not, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the neighbor church next door. Just kidding. So these guys got together, and they said, Moses, we don't like how you're leading us. We're going to rebel against you. Now, rebellion... Could I deviate a little bit? Somebody said, go ahead and deviate. See, the Bible says rebellion is a bad thing. The Bible says rebellion is like the sin of what? Shout me down. Witchcraft. I got a good man in front here. Could you imagine the Bible likening rebellion to witchcraft? What does witchcraft do? Now, you could go and do some home research on it. I'm not going to dwell on it today, but you should know what I'm talking about. So rebellion, these guys got together and they, create, they want to create some trouble. Uh, well, to make a long story short, Moses said to them, Moses said, hey, go and get your censors and let's come before God with it. Guess what they did? They refused to follow the direction of God's leadership because Moses was God what? Talk to me. God's leader, wasn't he? He was appointed by God. Do you know what happened to the three guys and the 200 guys that rebel against God? Barbara's talking to me. The earth opened and they were what? Swallowed up. You see how... Se now, I want you to see how serious rebellion is. Thank God for his mercy and grace today. Amen. I don't think he would open up the uh, mm -hmm. earth open, even though it's a past. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but this, that's, that happened to them. Not only that happened to them. Here's what also happened. Because they were instigating people to rebel against Moses, the Bible tells us that 15,000 people were hit by a plague. What am I saying, church? You see, God treats rebellion in, he looks at it in a way, because you hurt your own life when you do that. We have a lot of folks, not necessarily in church, but I mean in places, you know, they don't like leadership. They don't want nobody to tell them anything. Hello? You can't tell somebody something these days. They throw a hissy fit when you tell them. Hello? Don't say amen. This is not a part to say amen. But we can say ouch. All right. So here's what God said. That's to, let, to bring you back to the, to, the, to, to the staff. God said here, okay, I'm going to show you guys. Well, Moses said it, God speaking to him. I'm going to let you know who is really the leadership here. So God said, each one of you guys from the 12 tribes, bring a rod 
and come to me with it. So all of them brought a rod, included Aaron, who was from the tribe of Levi. He brought his rod. Some of you will remember Aaron's rod. Aaron's rod was very famous to the children of Israel. Come on. Wasn't it the same rod when they went before Pharaoh? God said, throw down the rod. What happened to the rod? It became a snake. He reached out, picked it back up. It became a rod again. It was the same rod that Aaron held over the water. The water became what? Blood. It was the same rod Aaron held up and then he, frogs came hopping all over the place. I'm not saying there's power in the rod. Understand that. What I'm saying, God was showing who's what? In charge. So God said, bring these rods. Leave them overnight. And the person rod that produces life the next day is the one that's in what? In charge. This rod that was dead as a doornail, the next morning they woke up, what happened? Tell me. That dead piece of wood started to produce some flowers on it. it well, it produced flowers. So, what in the world? What? What was God saying? God was saying, even if something is dead as a doornail, I can bring life to it to show you who's in charge. Are you in the house today? You see, God is an all-powerful God. And what God did to a rod, I can tell you, he can do the same today. Your life, my life, there's some areas in my life <clears throat> can be dead as a doornail. God has a way of doing what? Bringing life. Because he specializes in resurrection power come on somebody he can bring something that is dead back to life and I don't mean a person if you did it in Lazarus but I mean things in your life that you consider dead oh this is dead in my life God and you ask God say God stir this thing up again oh God this uh, let me make up something this uh, help me somebody help me preach here today this thing that you put in me this calling that you're putting me, this gift that you're putting me, I think it's dead. God has a way of doing what? Stirring it back up so life can come back into what he placed in your heart. Come on, somebody. Your life is valuable to God. God was saying to Aaron, if you, not to Aaron, to the people, listen, I'm in charge. If you surrender your life to me, I could make dead things come alive in your life. So we see Aaron rod, the same rod that was dead, has flowers in it. So God said, take that rod and put it in the Ark of the Covenant. So we have the manna in there as a reminder. We have the rod as a reminder. Let's talk about number three and then we'll close. God told Moses, <clears throat> take the word of God or the law of God and also write them on tablets. You remember that God, Moses was up on the mountain and God gave him the Ten Commandments. Remember that. Those, seven, ten, those Ten Commandments, Moses came down and then he saw the children of Israel worshiping a what? A cow, a dead cow. They made it out of brass. And Moses was so angry, he took that and did what? Smash it against the, that image and the image was crushed to pieces. God give them again these ten, this tablets with his laws. So God was saying, let's take that law and also put it right in the middle of this Ark of the Covenant, which represents my presence. Aren't you glad today? Let me bring this to you and say, okay, well, how does that apply to me? How many of you know that God's word is like his presence to us? Here's what David said. David said, Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his ways? But pay, taking heed or paying attention to the word of God. Amen. You see, God's laws or the Ten Commandments, we don't have that written in, in stone to us today because God said, I will, not, I will write them on your what? On your heart. God's commandment is his word to us today. And we have what? His word today. Here's what David said. And I'll close on this one here. Here's what David said about the word of God. 
David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. He said, Blessed are they who walk according to the law of God. So what is God saying? I put that law right in the middle of the, of the, in the, in the Ark of the Covenant. I'm saying I want to put my word right down in your what? In your heart. So David said, if I walk according to it. Here's something else David says. He said, I have, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not do what? Sin against you. Here's another one. I'll finish with this one. He said, I will not neglect your word, O God. What was David saying? David was saying, listen, just like how important the law was that God said, keep that law, put it there, right in the middle. He's saying, put that word right in the middle of your life, in your heart. You see, you and I cannot grow if we don't do what? Put the word in. This word, church, is so important to us. The Ten Commandments, God speak to us today. The Bible said in past times, he was speaking through the prophets. But today, God is speaking to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. Let me say this to you, church. Just as God wanted them to keep the law, the Old Testament folks, He's telling us today, I want you to keep my word, because my word is my law. He wants us to do that today. There's blessing, church, when you put your life in this word today. There's blessings that will come to your life. Would you stand with me this morning and give Jesus a big praise all over this place today? Hallelujah.